Now then, how are you doing? I hope you're well. You know, I love a challenge, me. But there was a point in this particular project where I really thought I'd bitten off more than I could chew. I decided I wanted to paint the Northern Lights. Unfortunately, a suitable technique just seemed elusive to me. Now, these are the experiments that bit the dust along the way. Well, look, this was my first effort. Too dull, no shape or control. All right. I tried lifting them out. Dreadful, absolutely dreadful. Far too many hard edges. I didn't even finish that one. Now look, this one was getting closer, but the sky uh, was starting to look too uh, solid, like mountains in the mist. Finally though, I think I cracked it, and here's how I did it. The Aurora Borealis, or commonly known as the Northern Lights, are a tricky subject to paint. They're ethereal and appear like ghostly curtains of light in the sky. With few exceptions, there are no hard edges to be seen, which is why I've chosen to approach the subject almost entirely as a wet-in-wet -wet wash. I'm going to start by thoroughly wetting the paper. In watercolour, a wet-in-wet -wet wash is one where paint is applied to a damp surface. Multiple colours applied one after the other are encouraged to fuse together as seamlessly as possible in hopefully an aesthetically pleasing way. Let's start with cadmium yellow. If you look at examples of the Aurora Borealis, you'll see that their appearance can vary enormously. I've chosen a scene where the curtain of light sweeps down towards the horizon from the top left-hand corner. Having established its basic shape, I'm working the colour upwards. Now, One thing that you should know is that I'm working with my board set at an angle of about 30 degrees, which means my paint is naturally going to flow downwards. The rays of light in the Northern Lights appear to flow upwards though, and you're probably wondering why I haven't turned the board upside down. Hopefully you'll see the reason why very shortly. In watercolour, we work from light to dark, making cadmium yellow a natural starting point. I'm now applying Prussian blue to the scene. Well, because the paper is still damp and the board is set at an angle, the blue flows downwards into the yellow. The fortuitous knock-on effect of this is that where the two bleed together, we get green an important ingredient of the Northern Lights. It's important not to be too heavy-handed with this. Flicking the brush downwards creates the straight rays of light that we're looking for, but gravity must be allowed to do most of the work. Also, the blue mustn't be too dark, and the paper mustn't be too wet, otherwise the Prussian blue will obliterate the cadmium yellow and the effect will be lost. I want to inject a little warmth into the scene. For this, I'm using alizarin crimson, followed shortly by a hint of cadmium red. The vertical rays need to be maintained, of course. Any lines going off at a different angle would look very odd indeed. I say vertical, but if you look closely, you'll notice that they're actually converging slightly, 
as if they might meet at some unseen vanishing point high in the sky above. In watercolour, timing is everything, never more so than when we're working wet in wet. If the wash is allowed to dry, hard lines will appear, or worse, if the wash dries unevenly, then there's a huge risk of backruns. I've now mixed up a dark blue from French Ultramarine and Burnt Umber. I'm going to use this to paint in the surrounding sky, hopefully leaving the aurora as the dominant highlight. As always, I must continue to flick the paint downwards, creating the rays of light. Mostly, this needs to be consistent, but slight variations in the spacing can help to give it a more natural, random appearance. Well, although I'm happy with the initial result, I'm going to need to strengthen the blue a little more as I go along to maximise on the impact of the aurora. These are the trickiest parts of the painting. The wash is starting to dry off, so I'll need to work quickly. That more or less completes the wet in wet wash part of the painting. To give maximum impact to the scene, I'm adding a dark foreground of trees mixed from French ultramarine and burnt umber. There's just one thing left to do. The scene's looking good, but it's missing one important ingredient. Stars. There are many ways in which stars can be created. One way is to mask them out at the very start of the painting, before applying any paint at all. I'm not so keen on that because I don't know at that stage exactly where my highlights are going to finish up. White paint is an option of course, but in my opinion white never looks as bright and white as the white of the paper. The solution I've opted for is to flick the stars out with the end of a craft knife. The only thing you need to watch out for, other than taking your finger end off of course, is to avoid creating any repetitive patterns. The odd constellation is fine though. 
Well, I hope you enjoyed that demonstration of how to paint the Aurora Borealis. Or if you live in the Southern Hemisphere, the Aurora Australis. Until next time, take care.